So here we are on a, a Sunday, which is known as Palm Sunday, right? All around the world, people are celebrating Palm Sunday, which is the day that Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. We are doing volunteer sign-ups today, and you might wonder, like, what does that have to do with Palm Sunday? And let me tell you what. You know, there's this occasion where Jesus was approaching the ride into Jerusalem, and he sent a couple of his disciples out to fetch the donkey that he was going to ride on. Now, I don't know if you can picture yourself as one of the disciples, but I might have thought, like, that was the lame job. <laughs> Why do I have to fetch the donkey? Like, can't I do something else? But anyway, I've got to fetch the donkey, and what's more, I'll have to argue for the donkey if they stop me from taking it. I'll have to tell them that the master wants it and hope that they agree to let me take the donkey. But those disciples that went and fetched that donkey, that simple menial task, were the ones that created the platform for Jesus to do that triumphal ride into Jerusalem where the whole city was in uproar, people putting their palm gloves on the ground saying, Hail to the King of Kings! It was that simple act of service that fulfilled thousands of years of prophecy. They had no idea what they were probably doing, but just that act profoundly impacted the story we have of Jesus that's been handed down for generations. Think about Peter and John that had to prepare the Passover meal. It's just a few days later, and Jesus sends them into the city to make preparation for that Passover meal, the Last Supper what we'll celebrate on Friday night. And there they were, laying a table, setting out food, collecting what was required, making provision for what has come to be known as the Last Supper, the communion meal that we celebrate and share in regularly for generations since the time of Jesus. It's simple acts of service that make way for incredible things for God to do. And I want to be part of it. So whatever it takes, if I have to be the one to put chairs out so that somebody can hear a message on Sunday or participate in worship, I'll do it. Because if someone can hear something from Jesus through my act of service, I'll play my part. This is the last session of our DNA course. We're running a DNA, which is our membership course, after the service, but we're bringing the content into the service. If you didn't know, that's what's been happening the last few weeks. And this is the last one, and it's the one where we kind of share a little bit more intimately about Redeemer Church itself and the ministries that you can be involved in, which is why we're doing the volunteer sign-up. But it's a little personal, if you like, to who Redeemer Church is. And so this is what I'm going to be sharing with you this morning. You might have seen at the back, we've got that world map, and there's a, a, a statement above that map, making disciples one life at a time. That's the vision statement, if you like, of Redeemer Church. It's the the, the, the motto, the thing that we go back to when we consider what are we doing and why are we doing it. And uh, you might ask, well, where does that come from? Obviously, the, the first part comes from Jesus' great commission. When he ascended into heaven and he spoke to the disciples with this great last command for us to be carrying on until he comes back again, it was to go and make disciples of all nations to help people to become followers of Jesus, to become like Jesus, and to pass that message on to others. That's the mandate of every local church. It's not unusual that, every, that a church should have that within some way in its statements. To make disciples is what Jesus has left us as a task. And we've got this one life at a time there because there's an aspect to which uh, we can get lost in the big picture, if you like, and we can begin to think of making disciples as like a numbers game or how big is the church getting and kind of what's the next big thing. And forget that every disciple matters and every individual is on their journey with God. And it is for individuals in the church that Jesus is coming back for. In Matthew 16 verse 27, Jesus speaking, For the Son of Man is going to come in His Father's glory with His angels, and then He will reward each person. Then He will reward each person person according to what they have done. It's not just a matter of this collective mass of Christianity that one day are going to heaven. Each person is part of that collection and has a role to play and has a story to tell about their journey of faith. What I love about Redeemer, we've been here nine years. In fact, next year, next, day, next Sunday will be our ninth anniversary. Lee and I, we preached the first Sunday was Easter Sunday 2015. <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying that's something to celebrate. I'm just saying it's like it's, our, it's just our story. And I'm so grateful for our, our story. And I'm so grateful for the people that we've met in this room and some that are no longer in this room that we would never have met if we didn't come here. 
I think of um, Alan Sushon, I'm not sure he's here today, but baptizing him in this little pool down here at Vanilla Village. We're not allowed to baptize people there anymore, but he got baptized there. <laughs> and in that moment, like together as a church, it was an emotional moment. He was weeping as he came out of his baptism. It happened here in the context of this local church. I love the story of Lawrence. I don't know if you're here, Lawrence. Where are you? Not here, but anyway. Lawrence. I love hearing your story because Lawrence came into this building on Christmas carols. That was the first time she came into this building because she loves to sing. And you're great at singing, Lawrence. And in that, she came to the Christmas Day service. And in that, her journey of faith has unfolded. And for me, it's been such a privilege to know you, Lawrence, as a person as part of this Redeemer community, as part of this story, because it's not just about the making disciples and the big picture, but it's about the individuals that do this walk together. There's Ricardo, who we met with this week, and I don't know if you hear Ricardo, but what, what a beautiful man you are, Ricardo, and I'm so grateful for you, because often Ricardo will send me a message on the anniversary of his attendance when he first joined, first came in, and because it was a significant moment in his life and the journey that we've walked and watching your life transform and what God has done is just amazing privilege to be part of not just the system of a church, but the disciples that are being formed one life at a time here in this community, the Burkholder family, who are a beautiful family. Such amazing people. Your home has been used for youth meetings and home groups and worship nights and just such a wonderful, loving heart for the community of God's people. and We love and appreciate having you in this house. That's the biggest home group in Redeemer Church. It's in Flick on Flack. I think you can squeeze another one in there. If you're in Flick on Flack, I'm just saying, I think they've got another space. Just love everything that happens here. I met Ola. She's a Nigerian student. When you. I met her at Nando's in Jumbo with Tommy. Some of you will know Tommy. Tommy was coming to church. Ola was nowhere near church. We were sitting having lunch at Nando's, and she tells us her story. Her mom's a believer. Her mom's a church goer. Her mom's a prayer. That's her mom's story, but it's not Ola's story. We baptized Ola here in La Pranus Beach, and what a beautiful day it was. And even today, I find on my YouVersion app verses that Ola is highlighted or posted because she's following the way of Jesus. I love this church. And I love the fact that we can work hard to make disciples one life at a time. And that's our vision, and that's our hope. We have a series of values. There are eight of them that we have posted on the wall. They are those pictures there. You can see them with a little um, description of what they mean, the things that we kind of hold dear, if you like, prioritize, seek to, to work out. And um, I'll just run through them quickly. You're not going to spend a lot of time, but um, we, we are have a value of being a family. Now, I mean, you could preach a thousand sermons on that topic because a family is quite a unique kind of um, set of relationships, right? When you say family, I mean, I don't know if all of you suddenly think of ideal world, loving brothers and sisters, you know? I don't know about you, but my family wasn't like that. I, mean, I remember my brother like pressing my head into the carpet floor on, on the lounge when I was a little boy, and he was still bigger than me. It's not the same now. I'm bigger. <laughs> But growing up in family has got its challenges. And so when we say we are being a family that's a value to us, it doesn't mean that we are perfect, nor that we behave perfectly towards one another, but that we are committed to one another, that we love one another, that we will forgive one another if we wrong each other, that we're prepared to go out of our way to help one another because we're a family. That's what we believe. If you want a scripture, Ephesians 2 verse 19, consequently, you're no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens of God's people and also members of his household. That's what we are, a family. We value praying with faith. You know the story of Jesus when he walked through that temple, or maybe he wasn't walking because he was kicking over tables and slashing his whip and driving out the, the money changers and all those who were selling sacrificial animals. And what did he say when he did all that? He said, my house should be a house of prayer. My, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you've made it a den of robbers. We believe in prayer. What did we say? Praying with faith. They're all verbs. We don't believe in prayer, the concept. We believe in praying. We believe that God answers prayer, and God has been faithful to this church through prayer through many, many seasons. We have a value of sharing the gospel. 
there's this commitment of Jesus to seek and save the lost. He says that of himself. The Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. As a church, we're committed to reaching out to those who don't know God. I know that sometimes, you know, we, we can get um, kind of maybe even um, unhappy, you know, as the church grows and we don't quite know each other quite as well. But the thing is, <laughs> we need to reach people. Like in order to obey Jesus, in order to fulfill his commands, in order to express the values that he expressed, somehow we've got to make room in our hearts and in our buildings for others to join. Don't you feel like I do that there's so many people that need Jesus in Mauritius? Don't you feel like there are so many broken people, broken households, broken businesses, broken individuals who who hurt others because of the, the pain that's inside of themselves? So much sin, so much corruption, so much deceit, so many things that we don't like about our society, and all of it is addressed by the gospel of Jesus. We're committed to running an alpha, to investing. We've got to buy those meals that we're giving out for free. We've got to print the manual so that people can sit at their table and look at that content and take it home and think about it. We've got to hire another venue in the north or in the south or wherever it is to make space for those people that are part of Redeemer to begin to invite their friends and to reach that community. It's costly, but it's vital that we keep on reaching those around us. We've got a value of caring for others. It's the nature of the church. The early church, Acts 2.44, all the believers were together. They had everything in common. They sold property and possessions and gave to anyone who had need. There's this sense of commonness around that Christian community, and we believe in that. I really love the fact that as we've grown, we've we had some capacity. So like when something happens, a disaster hits Mauritius, like the cyclones earlier this year, we can mobilize and we can distribute hundreds of food packs. It's not just like, you know, I, I love, I mean, it's good that we can help one by one by one, and we must do that. But it's also good when you've got the capacity and you can make a difference that's substantial, that impacts society, that people can see God loves us because to redeem a church is giving us food or whatever it is that we're helping with. Raising up leaders, we believe in that. 2 Timothy 2 verse 2, and the thing you've heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to reliable men who will also be qualified to teach others. Churches are, I I don't know if you know this, but there are several churches in Mauritius without a pastor. And there are also churches with untrained pastors who who don't really have a grounding and know what to do and maybe even a grounding in the Bible, in the scriptures to be able to, to preach well. And part of our mandate as any local church is, is to equip And to train people that can play a role so that there's effective leadership, spiritual leadership, true leadership. Not just kind of um, the most popular personalities with the most profile. Not just the most charismatic people that can hold a crowd. Not just the wealthiest ones who kind of have the most influence because they have kind of a lifestyle of influence. Not like that. Spiritual leaders. It's what we have to do so that the church can be well led by those who are caring for the people of God. Planting and serving churches. When you read through the book of Acts in the New Testament, it's like a church planting manual, you know? There's just story after story of communities being formed and churches being planted. Last year, we had that as our theme, this idea of participating in the global mission. We used a scripture from 2 Corinthians that says that our hope is that as your faith continues to grow, our sphere of activity among you will greatly expand so that we can preach the gospel in regions beyond you. That's the heart of the Apostle Paul as he writes to this local church. Our hope is that you will get so strong in your faith and mature in your spiritual life that we'll be able to use you as a base and then others can be reached because that's the aim, to plant another community and another community so that there can be a healthy place that people can find God and grow in their relationship with Jesus. Sometimes it's not easy to plant churches, you know. We've got that service in the north. It's twice a month now. I try to go once a month to that service. Jonas tries to go once a month to lead worship. Often Doné is there once a month, but lately he's been shirking his duties and (laughs) making us rearrange our whole schedule. In the south, we have people going to the south every week. I mean, yeah, every week. And sometimes they run it themselves from the leaders that are there, Ingrid and Chester and Michelle, Carla and Moya go pretty much every month. 
Ron and Carol go pretty much every month. Sid and Cheryl quite often, um, probably almost every month. And uh, it's a commitment, isn't it? I mean, I'd much rather have everyone here. I'd much rather kind of, you know, be here. I'd much rather just be in one place preaching all the time and kind of working with this community. But there's something that God has called us to. It's part of our vision, part of the biblical mandate to plant and to establish so that others also can hear the good news. I mean, you've got that approach. You've got that strategy. You can build a bigger building. You can have the best preacher every Sunday, best worship band every Sunday. You can build a huge mega church. Or you can sacrifice and send people out at different times and, and put up with things that are like, oh, I wish that was a bit better this week. Or why is there so many people this week? It just happened because, you know, I don't know, Donay was in hospital or something. I don't know. But <laughs> like, you know, something happens and like you have to adjust. It's, it's inconvenient. But it's not inconvenient for us. It's inconvenient for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of advancing God's kingdom and establishing what he wants to do around the island, and even beyond. From this church, we've invested financially in other churches, in Madagascar last year, and Seychelles. We haven't this year invested any funds so far, but I'm sure we will at some stage, but to participate in those churches' mission and their work in those nations. And Lee and I traveled to Seychelles a couple of weeks ago so that we could spend a week with that church. It was probably the worst week to go. I would have, I w- I would have you know, if I'd known in advance, I would have said, Dottie, like, just let's change our plans. Let's do a different week. But there we were in the Seychelles, and things were challenging. What, shouldn't we just, like, pack all that up and just stay here? No, we shouldn't. We should push through our challenges, and we should make sure the kingdom of God advances and serve other churches so that they also can prosper and do well. I'm pouring my heart out. I hope it's okay for you. <laughs> Investing in young people. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. Where are all the students in the room? Put your hands up. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. But set an example for the believers. Set an example for the rest of the church. Those of you that are young, who are waiting you know, for an opportunity later in life, the Bible says... Paul said to Timothy, you set the example. You set the example. If you want to worship, worship with all your heart. If you have a desire to preach, study the Bible with all your heart and mind. If you care about people, reach out to others. If, you, if you're waiting for one of these older people here in the corner, I'm not pointing to anyone, you know, to come and greet you in your student group over there in the corner. Stop waiting Move from that corner and get into this group over here and say, Hi, I'm Ola from Nigeria. I'm here and I'm one. So tell me about your life. Tell me about your story. If you're waiting for somebody else, well, you know, maybe someone else, you know, could do Kidsman. When they need someone, then I'll maybe step in. Listen, let me tell you for sure. Kidsman always needs people. Always. There's never a moment where you don't need someone. Won't you come and join us in the work of ministry? Don't let anyone look down on you. Because you are young. The last one, applying the scriptures. Matthew 7, 24. Therefore, anyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice. That is our value, applying the scriptures. We want to be true to the text. I want to know what God says and how he says it and why he says it. I want to understand God and all his ways, and I want to live in the light of that word. And I hope that as time passes, if you're new in this church, that you will grow to love the scriptures and putting them into practice in your life. To treat them as so precious and valuable as the words of God and also as so helpful and so powerful for the life that you and I are called to live. Redeemer Church is led by a team of elders. There are uh, five of us at the moment. Uh, Donay and Hanti are in that five, although they're not ordained in this church yet. They're working with us on the team. But they are Carlo and Moya, Cedric and Cheryl, Jonas and Ketia, Phil and Lee, and Donay and Hanti who are working with us on that team. Those are the people that carry responsibility for you as a, a flock, if you like. 
And now guiding scripture, one of them, there are many, but I'll just read to you from 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 1. To the elders among you, I appeal to you as a fellow elder and a witness of Christ's suffering, who will share also in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. That's my goal. To be a shepherd with humility, to serve the people of this local church, to lead people to Jesus, and to honor him with who we are and all that we do in this local community. This team of elders is the best team you'll find anywhere on the planet. They're incredible people. Heart for, for you as a people of God. Great sense of stewardship and responsibility over what God gives us. Earnestness to wrestle with each other at times about things that we're making decisions about. To come to the best place for the church. I'd rather not be on any other team. I'm happy with this team that we have. Redeemer Church is funded by the people of this church. You want to know about the finances of Redeemer Church? It's funded by us that are sitting in this room. People who give regularly tithes and offerings. And I believe in tithing. I believe in taking a portion of our income every month and giving it to the church for the activities and the ministry of the church. We are blessed by the church, the facilities that we sit in, all the people that serve and that are employed by the church and all the different things that we do. All that comes out of the finances that people are sowing into the church. I believe in tithing. I believe it's a biblical principle. I believe it's good for us and I believe it's good for the kingdom. There are also amazingly generous offerings that come in from time to time. Someone who makes a, a free will offering that we, enables us to do more and bigger things and greater advances for God's kingdom. And all of those are part of the way God uses us to advance his kingdom. A verse that spoke to me personally about tithing and giving is from 2 Corinthians 8 verse 7. But since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in the love we have kindled in you, See that you also excel in this grace of giving. And I think it hit me that verse because I want to excel in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness. As I was reading, yes, I want to excel in that. Yes, I want to excel in that. Now see, Phil, that you also excel in the grace of giving. It's part of the package. And that's what God spoke to me. And I'm putting to you that if you're part of this local church, won't you consider participating financially regularly so that we can continue to do the work God has called us to do. It's half past 10, and now we are going into our volunteer section. This is the part where you hear about the ministries in Redeemer Church and how you can sign up to do something incredible for God. So I want to ask those of you that are going to stand at these tables to come up to the front so that we can start that process. And before we dismiss this congregation, everyone can get a feel for what the ministries are and who's involved in them. So why don't you come now to your place at the table. There's two at the back, two there, and four over here. Okay. How are we all here? So I'm going to do a quick introduction. Liane, what's your, what's your? Huh? Also not this one. Also not this one. Liane, are you in the wrong place? <laughs> it's all moved. Violet, so community projects, um, things that we do in the community, from Violet's preschool where we do a feeding scheme, to, uh, um, and also we do ball skills or kind of activities with the kids in the community, preschool age. It's every, well, she can tell you all about it when you get there. Carlo, hospitality team. These are the people that serve there at the coffee counter. 
Every Sunday, there's someone who comes early, make sure the cups are ready, water's hot, coffee's ready for you. Worship team. You had to be with Jonas. Okay. Anyone who's interested and involved in worship? On this side, we've got Alpha. There's a whole group of them, three of them there. All for Alpha, and also you half-half, eh? Uh, for Kidsman, Kathy and Carissa. So Kidsman on the right, everyone that wants to be a preacher one day in life, sign up for Kidsman. That is the best training you will ever receive. Alpha, that's, you've heard me speak about that already. If you want to know how to help or what, you, what kind of things are going on there that you can invite a friend to, tech team at the back, that's sound, media, live streaming, all through the back there. And then there's events. Is that you, Adele? I see you on the edge there. <laughs> events team. That's for special events where we have to set up in advance and kind of make things all beautiful. And there's also decor where Jenny's also there. I see. That's really great. So decor. Don't think Jenny's done a fantastic job. Flowers for the ladies' day. And, uh, okay. So now, yes. Yash and Devi. Visitors welcoming. That's the couple that can help you. If you're new to Redeemer, if this is your first time, you want to know a bit more, go and speak to them. If you want to help other people that are new to Redeemer, go and speak to them to be part of their team. Have I missed anyone else? Okay, we're good. 